Good evening and welcome. I am Amarachi Ubani. Tonight, Acting President Oshibajo meets with Southeast rulers, describes Arawa and Biafra agitations as both wrong and unlawful. Kidnap King Bing Evans leads policemen on a tour of his erstwhile detention camps for people he abducted. Elders and youths of Bakasi community demand probe into alleged diversion of relief materials, accused Senator Itagiwa of complicity. And 61 people perish in raging forest fires in Portugal's central region. Government declares a three days of mourning. The acting president has issued a fresh warning to youths agitating for secession and issuing a quit notice to other Nigerians describing it as wrong and unlawful and a violation of the constitution. Professor Yemi Oshibajo gave the caution today during a consultative meeting with traditional leaders from the southeast at the presidential villa in Abuja. He stressed that while anyone found culpable will be prosecuted, tendencies to drag the nation into another civil conflict should not be tolerated. Our correspondent Gloria Omezuki reports. In the series of consultative meetings, it's the turn of traditional rulers from the southeast. The acting president arrived for the third meeting on the same subject, the issue of quit notice by northern youths and calls for secession by youths from the southeast. Professor Shibajo declared the federal government stands, reiterating earlier warnings to prosecute any airing party. Both agitations, the manner of both agitations, the method and the objectives are wrong, they are unlawful, and a violation of the laws of Nigeria and its constitution. In section two, that Nigeria is one indivisible and indissoluble sovereign state to be known by the name the Federal Republic of Nigeria, end of quote. That is the law of our country. And let us not be in any doubt about the fact that the Federal Government of Nigeria is committed to ensuring that our country remains united and that anyone who uh, violates the law Nigeria's unity is one for which much blood has been spilled and many hundreds of thousands of lives have been lost. Many have paid for the unity of this country with their lives. And it will be wrong of us as men and women of goodwill in this generation to toy with those sacrifices that have been made. Perceived marginalization and other reasons are issues the federal government is clearly looking to address, but through the right channel. Our greatness lies in our being together, and I believe very strongly that you as our royal fathers will ensure that the message is clear to all, that the greatness of any people lies in their being able to work together, despite their differences, despite the, the, the despite the types of offense that may have been caused between each other. The greatness of our nation, the greatness of any community lies in unity. And I trust that you, our royal fathers, will give us the, the right direction and advice to ensure that our country remains together. The acting president is not only maintaining a hard line. He says he will equally sustain talks with traditional rulers from the north this time around on Monday, the 19th June. 2017. Gloria Umezuke, Channels Television News. Meanwhile, the acting president, Professor Yemi Oshibajo, has asked leaders from the church to ostracize people he describes as thieves and looters of the economy. He was speaking today during a church service at the presidential villa, where he also expressed concern about those who fraudulently amass wealth to the detriment of the nation. We need to talk more about honesty. We need to talk more about truth. We need to talk more about 
need to talk far more about honesty. In the same way that we talk about giving, we need to talk about honesty. Because just as His Eminence said, Nigeria's great problem is not an absence of prosperity. It is, as you so eloquently put it, we have enough for our needs, but we don't have enough for our greed. The greed of many is what has landed this country where it is today. If the church says you are not allowed to steal and we ostracize the thieves in our midst, if a man's resources, if what a man has does not measure up to what he should earn, if we find that a man has more money than he should have, if a man is earning a salary in the civil service or in the public service and he has houses everywhere, we have to hold him to account. It is, he must first be held to account in the church. Acting President Yemi Oshibajo, and as he continues his consultations with leaders of different ethnic, religious and interest groups on the nation's unity in Abuja, some of the southern leaders are also meeting in Lagos. The meeting, which held in one of the leaders' residence in Lagos, had leaders from the southeast, south-south and southwest regions in attendance. The meeting, according to the organizers, is said to be on the recent tension in the land and a threat to national unity. They say they're looking into the options on, on the table and strategizing on the best moves in achieving peace, equality amongst the different ethnic nationalities within the union. Some of those present include Afeniferi leaders like retired General Alani Akimiade, Chief Ayo Adibanjo, Senator Femi Okoromi, Okoromi President of Ohaneze, Chief John Wardo. Others are from the South South region. Prominent is one of the region's vocal activists, Tony Uranta, amongst others. In the strongest terms, the activities of Fulani Hesmen, who have taken over the entire southern Nigeria and middle bit of Nigeria including invading state of assemblies not to make laws, cows going to classrooms to force our puppies out of school, killing our, our, our farmers on their farms and raping their wives. Only a few days ago, the governor of Delta State said that farmers are now being escorted to their farms by policemen. That's not happening in our country. And yet, and we have law and order looking away, the way they are looking away against the Arewa youth who have given a, not, a, a notice that can destroy the unity of Nigeria. Lagos-based kidnap kingpin Chukwudi Dumeme Onwama Dike, also known as Evans, today led a team of policemen from the Federal Anti-Kidnapping Unit to what used to be his detention camp for people he abducted. The separate buildings located in Igondo and Ikotun in Lagos are so usually where the kidnapped victims are kept for days or months while negotiation for ransom are made. The kidnapped kingpin, who is now sober, told journalists this gang applied the most sophisticated strategies, which no gang has been able to equal. Chuku Dimeje, Owama Dike, also known as Evans, leads officers of the IG's intelligence response team to one of his camps on Green Street, bungalow area in Jakonde Estate, Isolo, Lagos. It's a three-bedroom apartment where he paid 700,000 naira a year as rent. While explaining how his victims were kept, the kidnapped kingpin is overcome with emotion as he drops a word for his comrades in crime. Police arrested me. So I believe there's nothing like kidnapping or maybe, you know, so my advice to them is that they should, as they're looking at me or maybe they watch me, so they're standing here, they should stop everything about that. Well, it doesn't pay. It appears as if even before his arrest, Nemesis was already catching up with the dreaded kidnapper. I went, it's when I went to the hospital that I confirmed that I have a cancer. 
and they have a proper treatment. At another camp located on Ashaye Close in the New Igondo area, two apartments are used by the gang. Used cooking pots, leftover palm oil and dried vegetables litter the kitchen. Telltale signs that food was prepared for captives here. There's one man from Aspanda, Ume. Uh, that is the only victim who transferred from that Ejibo side to this place. Then, uh, and uh, the pharmacist man. We talked to the man, the pharmacist man. He, uh, the man told us that he can only give us 500,000 euros. That is what he can able to be afford. And I said, okay, that how are we going to get the money? He said we should call his brother. That one said he have, uh, that he have run around, that he has able to gather like 23,000, 223,000 euros. And I said, okay, he should give us the money. Let him bring the money. And we collected the money. As investigations continue, more details of the kidnappers' nefarious activities and operations are expected to come to light in the coming days. Meanwhile, the three students and a lecturer of the School of Midwifery, Tudumwada, abducted in Kaduna State, northwest Nigeria, have regained freedom. The students and their lecturer were abducted on Friday by government suspected to be kidnappers along Beningwari Road in Beningwari local government area of the state when they were traveling on a bus to visit one of the students who was hospitalized in the area. The senior special assistant to the state governor on media and publicity, Samuel Arwan, explains that the students and the lecturer were released in the early hours of today through the intervention of security operatives. Mr. Arwan says the victims are in good condition and have since reunited with their family. In part two after the break, Benway State Governor Samuel Tom vows to implement anti-grazing law to the letter across the state from November. Please stay with us. <laughs> 